showing impressive, inventive and atmospheric photography throughout. They were unanimous in their decision. The award goes for the fourth time to David Perry, who also receives the Arthur Nicholson Trophy. This news and information brought to you by your Washington area Ford dealers. Good morning, I'm Bob Madigan. It's two minutes past six at Wash FM. And it's January 24th, and good morning to you. Dennis Owens with you at WGMS in Washington. Five hours behind the UK, Washington, D.C. is waking up. Welcome to Cork, and once again, a very special welcome to all our anchors. Off you go. I mean, they love it here, they're sitting in the sun, and a lot of them have never been to Ireland before, they're not from England here. Keep in coming. Keep in coming. Beautiful fish. What a corker, son. Not funny, but worth capturing on film. So here it goes with the dust seen before the bang is heard. Three days after the Primera UK was launched in a blaze of publicity, the car is still attracting interest in Tokyo. The Sunderland-built car is the first vehicle Nissan has had the confidence to tell Japanese buyers comes from Britain. Driving in Tokyo involves travelling at some of the slowest speeds in the world. Rush hour can mean gridlock, and if you achieve 10 miles an hour, you're lucky. For the next three hours, he pelts officers with roof tiles. And his mother can't persuade him to move. She says he needs to be locked up. Stop shooting. It really is quite terrifying. It's a long way from Whitley Bay. It really is. The main problem I've got here is he's sitting in great turn. Half an hour later, battle is joined. To beat the army of poachers preying on the River Tyne's vulnerable salmon stocks, the bailiffs have to use the same technology which helps the military deter its enemies. And he's probably returned to the shore there now, possibly with a fish or two, and being held by his companion, as you can see. When this story began, 
the children it concerns were just toddlers. Now most have celebrated their eighth birthdays. Certainly a couple of occasions when I turned up early from work to pick up my son and he wasn't there. And, you know, they, they would say, he's at the park, which park? There's so many parks in that area. And they didn't know? And they didn't know, no. I got there at about two o'clock to pick him up. There was no courts there. The classroom door was locked. It's an old village. But when the war is over, they cost $500 each to remove. It's a country that's experienced more than 20 years of virtually continuous civil war. It's a country littered with landmines. For these people, once farmers, tradesmen, refugees in many cases, a day's work now is the tense and laborious business of edging forward inch by threatening inch through the minefield. Jack Surtees keeps pigeons. He's a member of the Ryab Democratic Homing Society. His day can start at 5 a.m., depending on what needs to be done with the birds. Winter is a slack time for pigeon racers, so today he's had a lie-in until half past six. Well, I've kept them nearly all my life. My dad kept them before me. Nearly 60 years, I've had dealings with pigeons. Jack worked as a power loader at Vane Tempest Pit. He's used to early mornings. The job and the birds made sure of that. Back on the Tyne, a riverborne spectacular as a giant bird of fire carried a mythical child on its back down from the stars to us here on Earth. I just wish we could show it to more people, Martha. Absolutely. So they could enjoy what we are. 